These days, there's a lot of demands on your money with the rising cost of living, your mortgage, children. There can sometimes not be enough to go around, and that is assuming that everything goes perfectly and there's no emergency that requires a surprise use of funds. Our next guest advocates for setting aside money for the unexpected. Tim Sesnick, co-founder and CEO of Our Family Office, joins us for Perspective. Tim, thanks so much for being with us. It's one of those things where it sounds so obvious. Of course, I should have some funds set aside for emergencies. So few people actually do it. Yeah, that, that's right. And maybe it's partly because, well, first of all, there's a demand from all directions when it comes to your money, but also people don't quite know how to actually set up a, 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 an emergency fund, if you will. And I think the goal here is that everyone should set up, if they can, three months of living expenses as a fund, an emergency fund. And it may take a while to build up to that number, You know, set aside what you can, maybe it's 100 a month, maybe it's 200 a month, whatever you can afford, until you get to the point where eventually you've got three months of spending sort of available to you on short notice. And, and the where, what kind of account do you think is best suited to that three months of living expenses? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I think really what it comes down to is um, a tax-free savings, savings account, a TFSA is probably the best place to save because you can contribute money to the account. You can pull money out when you need it in the case of emergencies. And then if you do that, you can always replenish that account by recontributing again starting the following year. So if you pull out $1,000 now, you can put $1,000 back in next year. So it, and it, the money also grows in there tax-free, which is going to help you to accumulate more over time. Um, and by the way, I said three months. If somebody is self-employed and on top of that you're supporting a family, you might actually want to increase that that three-month um, uh, goal to maybe six to nine months even in some cases. But the TFSA is probably the best place to do that. And, you know, do you, are we just parking it in cash or are there kind of yielding instruments, low-risk yielding instruments, liquid, obviously, because you might need to call it on a, on a moment's notice? Yeah, really, the goal is not to grow these funds at a, at a high rate over the long term. I know you'd like to get some growth, and that's going to be possible. But the goal really is to achieve reasonable returns with a lot of safety so those, those funds are available on short notice. Um, because if you're investing in something, you know, equities that are more volatile, for example, and you need the money, it may not be there when you need it because, you know, values might have declined. So today you want to probably focus on cash, near cash investments, or maybe some fixed income investments. I mean, today, for example, bonds or bond ETFs are, are a good choice because interest rates are fairly high right now. We're expecting over the next you know, year or two for interest rates to maybe come down even a little bit, which will mean good news for bonds or fixed income. So I think those kinds of investments are probably where you want to hold your your um, your emergency savings for the short term. GICs can also be fine. They're paying paying a decent you know, yield today, but it's something a little more stable and more secure. You don't have to worry about. It. You want it to be there when you need it. And of course. Um do you have to define what an emergency is? Sometimes it can be, <laughs> it can be, you know, you can be a little liberal with how you dis define what an emergency is. Yeah, I know. I would encourage you if you build up this retirement, or sorry, this this emergency fund to really use it for emergencies only. Th things like maybe higher than expected car repairs. So I, I mean, car repairs are inevitable. You probably should be budgeting for some repairs every year. But if there's something that comes out of the ordinary that's a much higher expense than you thought to repair your car, or maybe um, if it's uh, you lose your job, for example, um, or maybe it's unexpected repairs to your home, those kinds of things that are unexpected, that's what you want to use this fund for. You don't want to use it for routine things or dipping into it for your vacation or anything like that. This is, should be really for true emergencies. And, and by the way, the one exception I would, I would make to that is that creating a fund for your next vehicle purchase is probably a good idea. Now, you might not want to call it emergency savings, but if you have a car that's paid off, you know, or you just finished making your payments on your vehicle and it's now paid off, Take the amount that you used to pay on a monthly basis and start setting that aside in a sinking fund or an, uh, an account, if you will, for the next time you need to purchase a vehicle so that when you do have to buy another vehicle, you're not borrowing as much as you might otherwise borrow because the cost of borrowing today is, is very, very high. If we can minimize the amount of borrowing, that's going to be really, really good. So emergency savings are great. Also, maybe set aside a separate fund for a vehicle. 